Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen, I'm the maker behind Do So Knits and I just share with you guys how knitting has interwoven into my life and other fiber crafts as well. So I'm a little inspired today. Today is December 31st, it is New Year's Eve and I'm in a little bit of a project planning mood for 2023. So today's video, I'm going to be adding a lot of different yarns and projects to my Ravelry queue for things that I want to be making in 2023. And I wanted to show you guys how I use my Ravelry queue and how I do that and how I plan my projects. So if that is something interesting to you, I hope you have something to work on. Hopefully maybe this can inspire some of your future 2023 projects, maybe some future planning, and I'll show you guys what I do. So just a little background on how I use Ravelry as a like project planning system. In Ravelry, any projects that I like, maybe want to make in the future, I favorite those patterns in Ravelry and then I add them to different bundles. I have bundles for sweaters, shawls, hats, scarves, things I may make Shane my husband. So I have all the different bundles and that's how I organize things that I like. That way whenever I want to cast on or find a new pattern, I can just go to my favorites instead of searching through the endless list of patterns that Ravelry has. Sometimes, sometimes I just scroll endlessly even though I have favorites where I've done a lot of the work. However, then whenever I have yarn for patterns that I like, that is when I then add them to my queue. I keep all of my stash yarn in Ravelry so that I can link patterns and my stash together and have all the information there. I'm not gonna be showing how I use the stash function in Ravelry today, but if that is a video you would like to see, let me know down in the comments below and I can make that happen, how I add yarns to my stash and organize them. But how I use my queue is once I have the yarn for a specific pattern, I then combine them and put them into my Ravelry queue. That way I have it kind of an organized place. I've done well in the past with some previous patterns. Some of my patterns are still in my queue that I do want to make still and that I do have yarn for. I'll show you kind of where my queue is at right now and then there are some patterns that I would like to add to my queue as well. So we're gonna switch over to the computer and I can show you guys where we're at so far. Just want to say up front this is going to have many screen recordings of me using Ravelry so if that is something that is not accessible to you, that you cannot watch, please don't watch this video. There are many other ways. This is just how I do it. I use Ravelry's Q function, but if it is not healthy for you to look at Ravelry's website, please do not. The settings my Ravelry are on, just so you know, I use dark mode and I have the shadows turned off. The shadows drive me nuts and I much prefer Ravelry's dark mode. So that is how my Ravelry settings are set up. So just so you know, before we head over to the screen recording. So these are all the projects that are currently in my queue. There's a lot of them. We currently have 13 different patterns in here. I have that first and you can see here I have, it shows you what the pattern is called for and then I have linked or what yarns I'll be using with this sweater. So with my White Mountains, you can see I don't have any yarn with it. So I'm just going to click edit really quick and I use my stash yarn and I know I'm using this Cascade 220 in this Heather color in the color turtle. So that is what I'll be doing. And then I can just click save. The same with this Wild Posy sweater. I know I'm using this Knit Picks Aloft in Carbon, which I don't have over here, but I forgot to add my Pletilope. And sometimes this can be a little tricky, but this is my Pletilope that I have, and I want to use both of those for this project. So I'm going to save that as well. And I think all the other patterns in here should have yarns with them. I think the only one missing one is this Moonset tee. And for this one, I'm planning to use 
Oh, I thought this was a DK weight. So I'm actually going to go ahead and remove that pattern because the yarn I thought I was going to be using for it is a DK and not a fingering. And I know it's saved in my favorites. Anyway, that's basically everything in my queue so far. So now I have this giant, not giant, I have a, one of those little rolling Ikea carts. And I'm going to add some things to my queue with some of the yarns that I have. We'll see how far we can get. And some of them we might have to explore some options that we have. Okay, so the first yarn I have right here is my Stress Knits. This is a DK and the color is Sunflower. And what I want to make with this, so you can see all my favorites are here. There is this pair of gloves that Wool and Pine just put out that I think look absolutely stunning and I want to make these. And it is a DK weight and I want to make them. So I'm going to add it to my queue with this yarn. I love having all my yarn in my queue because I can easily find it by the name. I just say that I want to use it. You can add other tags as well. Or if you have dates that you want to finish it by, notes, all that kind of stuff is here. I don't typically do much of that other stuff. I guess you also can include this as a Ravelry download on my wish list. I don't typically buy patterns until I'm ready to cast on. So I guess that is a feature you could always click if you wanted other people to know patterns that you want but don't own. So I'm just gonna click save changes and it automatically puts the things you add at the bottom of your queue. At the end of this, I'll probably go through and organize my queue so that all my sweaters, my shawls, accessories are together kind of in different sections. So easy peasy. The next thing I have is this color green. This is also a DK weight and my brother reached out to me and he wanted a like hunter green kind of hat. I don't necessarily have a hat in mind, but maybe I have something in my favorites. So if we go back and we go to hats, you also can search your bundles, which is pretty cool. So I can go in here and sort by DK patterns. Honestly, my brother's kind of a simple kind of guy. So maybe I'll make the Lyle cap that needles at the ready have mentioned so many times. I have not made it yet and it's been something I want to do. So I think I'm gonna do that. So, souvenir. Whoops, I typed a little too quickly. So I can go back and click in my queue and click edit details. Um, okay, that is not what we want. We want my stash yarn, souvenir. And I have this olive color. He had reached out to me after Christmas and said that he would like a hat and he sent the color that he wanted and I didn't think I had anything in my stash and then when I was pulling yarns for this video today I realized I had this one so that was pretty cool. I do have two other colors because the three colors are supposed to fade but I'd rather just get him a hat in a color that he likes and then if I can't do a fade, it's fine. I had nothing in, in mind for these patterns at all. So we can save that. And then I have this skein of Cascade 220 in a color red. And what I want to do with this one, I know what, it, I wanna make another Harlow worsted. And so I have another skein left over of another red from Shane's Montrealer that I want to use with this. I want to make like a duotone red Harlow hat. So I'm going to add this to my queue. I'm going to add this cascade color. Um, it's this one right here. And then the other color is firecracker heather and it's this one. This right here. So I think that's what's really cool about this is then I can pull these two up. You can see them kind of side by side. I try to shoot all my yarns now. I have a little light box that was like $20 on Amazon. And I shoot all of them on this white background whenever I add them so that I can compare them pretty easily. 
I think in the photos they may look really, really similar. However, this is much more of a red red and the other one is like a bright red. So I think that'll be really fun. So that's been added to my queue. And then I have these. And someone the other night at craft night was working on a velvet, velvet mirror cowl by Andrew Mowry. We're just on a little Andrew Mowry chain right now. And I was able to check this this morning and I have enough yarn to make this. So it calls for a uh, heavy fingering or sport weight, your main color, 70 grams of a Surrey alpaca. This is Shibui Knits Tweed Silk, Silk Cloud. It's a lace weight. So we may be pay playing it a little fast and loose with this because this is a lace and it wants a heavy fingering or sport. But I feel like sometimes people who rank mohairs, sometimes they call them errands or worsted when it's just like a lace. It's just like the amount of fluff they're taking into consideration. So we'll see when I swatch if this actually works or not. But for now, this is my plan. I want to use this as the main color. So this is what it looks like. It's so gorgeous when she was working on it. So this is the main color. And then I have this Sorella color in Genshi. It's just like a really nice navy blue. So it'll be pretty high contrast, but I think it'll be really, really pretty. So this actually isn't in my favorites. So you can see when I add it to my favorites, I just click cowl. It was very simple when naming my bundles. They are basically what they are. So I'm gonna add it to my queue. I'm gonna use my stash yarn. Okay, so this one isn't in my stash, so I'm gonna deal with adding that later and I'll add it to this later. But I think that is my plan. So you can see I have 348 meters and Andrea says you need 246 meters for your mohair or Surrey she used. So that's why I like that I have all of it saved and it does all my math. So that's been added to my queue, albeit I need to add this color as well. I got this like right before we moved or in the time frame of moving. I got this as a giveaway from Hooga Canyon's Patreon. I don't know why I didn't add it in. It just sometimes things get missed. Okay, so then the last kind of accessory I want to do and I'm a little on the fence about this one, but I pulled the yarn is I was thinking about making, okay, I found it. I let my camera cool down for a second. Uh, the shift, that's what I was thinking about making. I have three skeins of spin cycle dyed in the wool that I think would look really good together. And I also have this like scrap from my curio socks that I also think would fit. Maybe even better than this one. But it does say you need 200 grams of all the colors, you like a skein of each. But I may be able to use part of that. This also isn't in my favorite, so I'm gonna add that. I just, after making my inclinations, I think this would be really fun. So I'm gonna add this to my queue. Honestly, if I just use my stash yarn, they'll probably all come up. So for deep bump, I have 146 meters left. I have 40 of the 50 grams. So I'd probably honestly be okay. So I'm just gonna add all of them. So Huja is this dark one. This is Cassiopeia. And this is Salty Dog. So those are all there. Save those changes. So I have all of these GGH baby alpaca skeins. I love them. I feel like it's very fall and I want to use them in a cow together. 
At first I was going to do the Moon Wake or Walk Cowl by Andrew Mowry. But I feel like this one will be a little bit easier. It's just garter and stockinette, zigzags. I think it's really cute and I think I could fit all of my skeins in a little bit easier. And I need five colors, 128 meters each. So let's check. So if I just use my stash yarn, GGH, I think it's technically a different weight. It says it's worsted. I think it'll be fine. And I have a hundred meters of each and this said 128. So we'll have to see. I think it'll be pretty close. Um, oh, I do have, I also do have six colors instead of five. So I think I'll be okay. I only have five here. I'll have to find the sixth one. So we're going to add that to my queue. And then the last thing I want to add is a Sophie scarf because I was zooming with my friend Courtney the other day and she had one and it was freaking cute. And I didn't know what I was going to make it out of. And I thought at first maybe I would make it out of one of these, but I really want to use them in a cow together. So when I was pulling out patterns and yarns earlier today, I did find this Merino Yak by Regia that I have. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's not pulling it because it's a fingering weight. So let me Merino Yak. I have a lot of Merino Yak apparently. I have four different colors of this type of yarn, Merino Yak, and I can just hold it double to make a Sophie scarf. This is just like a really nice gray, but I also might do it out of the gold. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. I'm actually gonna pop both these colors in because I like both. And we're gonna hit save. And that should be all of my accessories. So I'm gonna put this yarn away. I'm gonna let my camera cool down because it's overheating, I think, because there's a light above it. And we'll come back for the sweaters. Okay, so hopefully my camera has cooled down a little bit. I've gone ahead and I've pulled up all the patterns for all the yarn sitting here so that I can talk you guys through what I'm thinking and add them to my queue pretty quickly. And then we can look at my entire queue together. I've opened up the tabs of all of the yarns and then we can talk through them. So for this festival sweater, my size, I had to do a little bit of math as you can see with my calculator being open. I really love Molly's from Homestone Houses festival sweater. I think it looks so cute. And so what I have is I have this mini skein set from Molly. It's like blues and greens, it's gorgeous. And I had bought this palette, Knit Picks palette. It's marble heather. It's got like a nice, like bluey undertone to it. And I really wanted to use these together. I had originally bought this to go with these to make the Stria cardigan by Andrea Mallory. However, I do not want to do a half fisherman's rib sweater and I really just want to pull over. So based on the math, I would technically be about 480 meters short. However, that's me estimating a little bit of a larger size when I probably just need to add some like bust darts or bust shaping for this smaller size. Um, and if worse comes to worst and I'm playing a little bit of yarn chicken, I can get more of this from Knit Picks. Plus I think this is a full length sweater Not that people's project pages. Yeah, it's a full length sweater and I'd probably crop it a little bit. I've been realizing crops are a little more my style. I wear all high waisted jeans anyway. So I think this will be fine. So we're gonna use my stash yarn. We're gonna search by the color name because I remember that more. We're gonna switch to fingering. And I am considering, because it says I have 1200 or 2100 meters but I would have to hold this yarn double along with these being held double because this is a DK weight pattern and both of these are fingering weight yarns, but I think it would be an amazing sweater. Um, I don't stash mini skeins, so I can't add that one to this. 
So we're just gonna, I can add in the notes here though, like use with bluegrass mini skein set from a homespun house. Um, roughly 480 meters short of full length. So just added a couple of notes that I'm going to use this mini skein set with it and then I'm probably how much short I am on the meter inch. So save those changes. Okay, the next thing on my list is a ranunculus. I want to make a ranunculus. I've been wanting to make a ranunculus. Um, I don't know when I'll make a ranunculus, but I do want to make one. So this is Echo Puno by Elena Grossa. I had used this to... I had started making a sweater, but it wasn't exactly what I had in mind. So I have two colors of this, and I think this would be a really pretty ranunculus. So Echo Puno. I just feel like this is definitely more a summer knit. I have 860 meters in this gray. I have no idea if that's... Oh yeah, look, the shortest, long... 860 meters of the largest size of the long sleeve is what you need. So that's good to know. Added that in there. And then I have this Ostis shawl by Samantha Gurin. Um, this came up because I have this gifted yarn from a friend. It is Ba Ra Yu. It's really lovely, very sheepy. I wasn't sure if this purple is my color, but I was diving through DK patterns yesterday and I found this shawl and I think it would be really, really pretty in this. I may end up making it as a gift knit, but I would really like to use this yarn. So we're gonna add it in. Ba Ram U, and this color is Gothland. I have 1044 meters and here you can see 822 yards so definitely have enough this is my backup pattern the triangle garter wrap because the thing is is you start small and you make it until you like the size or you run out of yarn so that's another good backup for this so I'm going to add that in the notes here it is Triangle garter wrap. I just feel like with that one, I the triangle garter wrap, I might get really bored. But it would be good for on the go. Uh, the next thing is this Ingrid sweater. I've been wanting to make one for quite a while. I have this Merlot Heather from Wool of the Andes Knit Picks. And I would really like to use it. I really want like a rust or like orange color Merlot sweater. So this says I have 1100 meters. One, two, three, four down. So one, two, three, four down. We're gonna go with 750 grams. So 750 grams. And sadness garn is 50 grand skeins. 108 meters, so a 1620 meters total. Let's see what we have. So it's in my queue already. Let's edit these details though, because I didn't have yarn. So I'm going to be a little short on this one too. But again, it's really long and I think I may crop it. But overall, it does look like I may need to place an order from Knit Picks. Roughly, so we'll say 1610 meters by 106 meters, roughly 514 meters short. So it's good to have those little notes that's there. So I may be placing a Knit Picks order, but we'll see. Ah, so this one, this is the Lucky Dog sweater. I do need to add this to my favorites because I've looked at it many, many times. So for this, I will be using Wool of the Andes again. Uh, 
in this brass heather. I have 422 meters left. This is leftovers from my Four Keeps cardigan that I made. And I feel like Sherlock would look really stinking cute. So for their big, they have 590 yards for the biggest size and Sherlock is not the biggest size. So I think I will have plenty to do that for Sherlock. And he'll be cute in a little yellow sweater. So we close out of that. So then back to this Moonset tee. This was in my queue because I want to use this Vidalana by Knit Crate. It is a DK, it's wool, alpaca, and organic cotton blend. I really want to make a t-shirt with it. I only have five skeins, so I can't really make a sweater. Because I am not a five skein, long sleeve sweater size. <laughs> five skeins make a t-shirt for me. I'm a little busty. And this is a fingering weight pattern, so that's not going to work. However, I did go to Ozetta's like library, designer library, and they have this moonset pullover. Now, if you look between the two, they look pretty identical, but the pullover is a DK. Um, so based on the yardage required, I don't have enough. However, I'm pretty close. And with it being a t-shirt, I think five will be plenty. And what I'll do is I'll just make the sleeve because it's a drop shoulder. So I can just end the sleeve whenever I want. Honestly, like on her where that drop shoulder is, I wouldn't even necessarily want much more of a sleeve like she has here. Like I don't really wear elbow sleeves, so I could do much shorter or just see how it goes. So I'm just going to add this to my queue because I would really like to do this. And I think it'll work out. So let me edit this. We're going to use this stash yarn of Vivalana. Vitalana, Vitalana. There we go. I have 1,253 meters. And so that would put me above the second size, which is very small, a 41 inch bust. I'm more in this like 49 to 53 inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So between these two, I don't know if cutting out that much meterage will save me. But it also does look really long again. So I could shorten it, shorten the sleeves, and we'll see how far we get, I think. Because I do lug the v-neck shape a lot. And I think if I'm correct, it's in the round, top down. So I should be able to just kind of cast on and go. Um, and the last pattern I have pulled up is this Lava Lake Shawl by Stephen West. This calls for a five skein fade. However, I have this four skein fade that I purchased from Needles at the Ready. It's this really gorgeous greeny, like dirty green fade. And the five skein shawl, like that goes really, really long. So I'm pretty sure I could just omit the fifth color, increase to however I need to in the fourth, and then start my decreases. I think it'll be great. I think a four color shawl is plenty. I'm really surprised this isn't in my favorites. I really thought it was. So we're gonna add this to my queue, and I think this is saved as yellow fade. As I put them all together and yeah that is all the things I want to add I think there's one more that I forgot to add I also would like to make this balloon cardigan by petite knit I this is called for a lace and a fingering held together to get a DK I have a sport and a fingering that I think I can hold together this is knit picks will the Andes in sport weight <laughs> This is Bramble Heather, it's a brown. And then I have this really pretty Kumo by La Bienna Me. And it's the color Dusk. I don't know if these colors together are going to do exactly what I envision, but I really like the shape of this cardigan. So again, we would have to do a little bit of math. I know the math for this is correct because I bought this Surrey based on this pattern. So I know I should have enough there. I'm just 
a little more concerned about the f other one, but because it's a fingering weight. Oh, there it is, Arveta. Arveta, 210 meters for 50 grams. How many meters are you? This is 137 meters for 50 grams, so definitely a little bit thicker. The problem with this is I think this is one of Petit Knit's earlier patterns and the sizing isn't as great. Like what is 110 centimeters? 43 inches. That is not the size of my bust, however. The finish size of 123, whoops, is a 48 inch. So it's a little snug for me, but since this is a sport weight, it might end up a little bit bigger. We'll see. We'll just base our measurements off of this biggest size, so 350. Back to my normal calculator, so 350 grams. Those come in 50 gram skeins. So 1470 meters. So if we add this to my queue, use our stash yarn, all of our yarn weights, Bramble, I have 1,500, so I'm pretty close to what I would need for that biggest size. And maybe I can play with the gauge a little bit to try to get a bigger one. Um, it does bum me out a little bit finding these patterns that, like, I'm the top of the size range. Which is why I'm hesitant to do this pattern. I would like to just find a balloon cardigan that I don't really have to play with sizing as much. So I'm putting it in my queue so that it's like out of my brain, like this pairing and this type of cardigan. However, I may go on a search to find. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly <laughs> Randy, I think I was talking about the balloon cardigan and how I may end up switching that to a different pattern in the future. Um, but you can look and see I've added all of my patterns to my queue. And I think it's really nice to have it kind of this way. So if you scroll through, you can see my queue, all the projects that I have. You can, at the top, change the order and it takes you to this screen where if you know the order of things you want to knit, you can put them in that order. Um, I'm not really that person. I don't really know what I'm going to knit and when I'm going to knit it, sometimes I will reorganize so that all the sweaters are kind of together. So we can move the ranunculus up. We can move the Ingrid up. And something happened here to where my festival sweater is now in here twice. So we're gonna take a look at that. So I'm just moving all my sweaters together. I'll put all my shawls together. Right now I think, okay, so that shawl needs to move there. And this just shifts. So it doesn't like swap the two. It just moves everything to the next spot. So we're gonna move these mitten liners down to the accessories part. And yeah, so that's good. I have all my sweaters kind of together. Let's see, which of these? So we're gonna delete this one because you can see this one here has my what yarn I'll use and this one just has no information. So we're just gonna delete that from my queue. All my shawls are together and then all my accessories. And what's also nice about this is so when you go to cast on, you literally can just click. So let's say I end up do doing this sweater. I can just click start project. You can delete the pattern from the queue. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not starting it right now. And it literally starts your project page. You can change the date. It already pulls the yarns in and the project. So yarns project already linked, which is pretty cool. The other thing I did is you can also organize your queue. So in the organize screen, that's what makes this, I have an accessories bundle, a shawls bundle, and a sweaters bundle. So what you do to set that up is you can make, create a set, 
name the set and then what tags you want to do that for. So when I made the shawl set, I just used the tag shawl. And then when you go to your queued projects, you just click this tag section. And for sweater, I type sweater. For shawl, I type shawl. And then for accessories, I either type the word small because it's a small project, or I type the word hat because it's a hat. And then it automatically will put them into these little groups. So you can see for 2023 kind of what I want to focus on. So for 2023, apparently I would like to make 11 sweaters. That's a lot of sweaters. It's almost a sweater a month. That's not really feasible, but these things can just kind of linger and see. Um, I have six shawls on the docket. That's a lot. And I have 10 different accessories. That's a little more feasible. You know, accessory a month, not that big of a deal. So overall, I have a queue of 27 different projects. So that's almost two projects a month with a little extra. And now, granted, two of the sweaters, because I have my White Mountain and my Forager together using the same yarn. So obviously, I'm not going to be able to do both of those. So it's really 10 sweaters. That's a lot of sweaters for me. Anyway, that's basically the end of this video. Let me stop this screen recording. Yeah, it's gonna save that for me. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this video. Uh, I have a lot of big plans for 2023, a lot of projects and a lot of yarn that I can pull from my stash. And I know I'm definitely a person when I see a new pattern, I definitely wanna buy new yarn for it. So that's where having this stash and wanting to work through it is definitely one of my goals. It was a goal in 2022 and I did pretty well. I used more stash than what I brought in and I'd like to continue that goal into 2023. I would like to have less sweater quantities on hand um, and the fact that I have 10 sweaters lined up and I don't knit sweaters that quickly and I do get inspired by sweaters pretty easily so would like to maybe have like a less running docket of sweater quantities maybe two to three something like more attainable to where I'll be knitting those sweaters much sooner than the amount that I currently have. I have in the past definitely got inspired by sweaters go and find the yarn and then I buy it but then things like the Stryia cardigan I bought it and then I didn't want to knit it anymore and that's gonna happen for sure, but I feel like that's happened a lot with what I have. Um, so finding those new projects and being inspired and wanting to cast them on sooner is definitely one of my goals. Um, I do definitely have many projects and it is kind of nice to see like, okay, I could have 27 different projects from my stash and that's not including socks. I didn't pull any socks or anything like that for any of these sweaters. I didn't pull any of my Desivisa dye work yarn because obviously I just pull that every month. These are more sweaters, shawls, bigger accessories and things that I want to work on in 2023. So I hope you found this video helpful, insightful. Do you use the Ravelry stash? If not, does this make you want to use the Ravelry Q feature? And like I said, I found it very easy that all my stash is in Ravelry so then I can go and see and it does the math of how much I have. So I do find that pretty easy and helpful. If having a stash is something and how I use it is something you wanna see, again, make sure you leave that comment down below because then I can record that video for you guys as well. Like I said, I hope this video was helpful. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. And hope you guys are putting a little bit of love in every stitch of your making. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for watching. And thank you for all of your love. I will see you guys again very soon. Have a good day.